His ninth question. What are your thoughts on ritual magic? My reply is, first, we should distinguish between ritual magic proper and simple routine, which some consider a ritualistic, compulsive form of household magic. Intentionally habitual repetition yields clairvoyance that can be honed for accuracy. But practicing traditional ritual magic is slightly more involved than Crowley's slogan, every act is a magical act, might imply. Crowley specified every act as magic because he identified magic with the will, and he reckoned, one canst not but do what thou wilt. Of course, magic is often associated with trickery, such as the will of the individual getting duped into indentured service to any higher power. So if magic includes routine, but is not excluded to it, what more is there? If magic is merely trickery, why do magi practice it when they are alone? Traditional ritual magic involves drawing a circle, and sometimes a triangle just outside of it, and sitting down inside this circle until one begins to hallucinate, usually by attempting to creatively visualize a non-corporeal intelligence into the triangle of summoning. Once, if one can convince themselves this hallucination is real, they may interact with it, command its obedience in the name of God, and make pacts with it to accomplish certain goals you set for it. <clears throat> this technique produces mixed results. Sometimes it accomplishes the user's goals, but it almost always drives the practitioner insane. Usually, the more effective their art, the more insane they will seem compared to polite society. So, most ritual magicians are social outcasts and oftentimes solitary practitioners. There are clubs that practice certain types of ritual magic, such as Freemasonry, the OTO, etc., but these all cost the magician the certainty in their personal willpower and the actual physiologic and the actual psychological efficacy of magic that comes from solitary craft. Solitary magic, likewise, may be done in public. That is, it may be that an individual is in the altered mind state one enters when doing ritual magic while in a group of other people who themselves may or may not be on the same trip as the individual ritual magician. This is extremely dangerous, not for the life of the magician themselves, nor for the safety of the other people around, but for the continuum of the cosmos itself. The ultimate goal of ritual magic is manifestation the materialization of an object out of thin air or from the ether, etc. And manifestation is a definite bypassing of, otherwise strictly chronological, cause and effect, if not also a direct violation of the universal law of entropy. Insofar as ritual magic does work to yield otherwise impossible results, it risks ripping apart the fabric of reality itself by doing so. Most modern ritual practitioners, most modern ritual magic practitioners do not realize this, and so use this arcane method haphazardly and without regard. This is much the same way as most people alive today knowing how to drive a car but far fewer knowing how to tune one's engine so as to reduce its rate of producing pollution. <clears throat>